Hey traders from around the world, this is Jeremy Alexander Newsom with your Wednesday wrap up, real life stock review. Hope you're doing great. It's about 11.17 my time, 12.17 central. Checking out the SPY. Keep in mind all things I'm talking about today are subject to change due to volatility because the market is still open. But looking at the SPY, so we got again a nice little support around 204 and some change, 204.15. We've got some lower highs. We've got a very, very strong resistance uh, at 208.54. And that's what we're running into at the moment. I still think that we make a higher high on the market in general in 2015, probably upwards of 220 on the SPY. So at this point, I'm just kind of seeing this as kind of a nice consolidation pattern. And if and when, you know, keyword being if, if we do break out, I'll continue to stay with my bullish trend, more bullish than bearish. Here's the DIA. The DIA we talked about uh, not too long ago, maybe a May bull put spread. But I mentioned on the 6th of April, um, I give this a 99% chance that DIA is going to be above 173 by the 13th of April and a 98.4% chance it will be above 175 by next Monday as of 4 6 15. And I was doing that just in regards to uh, a few analysts out there who said that the market was going to just absolutely free fall. So I tried to figure give some pretty good percentages, at least in my point of view, in my opinion, uh, based on what I think personally the market will do. Again, very, very good support at 176 uh, and some, you know, 175.62 on the DIA. And your long term moving averages are kind of propping them up nicely. We're getting some selling pressure, not really giantly shocked by that. Again, some pretty decent resistance. We've got some higher lows. Maybe we begin to form like this. Maybe we trade sideways to, into May, throughout May. But at some point, I'm still thinking we break higher, make a little bit of a bigger move on the DIA. Here's your QQQs. Qs moving a little bit. Uh, got an intraday. Had an intraday trigger, I'm sorry, that we changed to a uh, end of day. So I want to close above 106.86 on the Qs before I'm more bullish than bearish. And then a trigger for protective put will be 104.11. And the IWM. IWM got some action on this guy uh, looking at it right now and this is really the resistance that we need to break above before we go higher this one uh, one black crow type of candle so we have a little bit of a gap at 125.62 and some change we still could have a little small rollover I don't think we do it's absolutely probable but this was a very very quick sell-off we're taking our time getting back up to those highs and if we do break through um, I think one of those things could happen again and this would be the time to buy. Buy the dips on these markets, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be afraid of them. There's a lot of analysts who are very, very bearish. Uh, and in my personal opinion, there's no reason to be right now. The market's making higher highs and higher lows, kind of all across the board. The Russell 2000, which many, um, many relate to as a leading index, uh, has broken out of this range. It is making higher highs and higher lows. It did bounce off the 100. Simple moving average on a weekly, which has done a few times before. So again, my overall opinion, I'm still bullish until something changes uh, drastically. Now, yes, I'm bullish to neutral, um, you know, doing a lot of spreads and things of that nature. And speaking of spreads, there's a few that I want to update you guys on. Here's an Apple uh, Iron Condor expiring this week that I know a lot of you um, might be in. So the 131, 130, uh, 118, 117 Iron Condor expiring today. Uh, Stan and Yoav are in those. So here's the 130 and here's the 118. Uh, you know, that should be fine. And then also there's the 119, 118, 133, 134 iron condo. That also should be absolutely fine on Apple. Earnings are about two weeks away. I'm going to keep an eye on earnings. I still think it does something like this until earnings. And like I mentioned, if we get above 130, if we gap up on earnings, uh, I think Apple is gone. Gonzo. I tried my best to make some R's on Hilton Worldwide, but it just didn't want to do it for me today. So I got stopped out for break even, no loss, no gain on Hilton. So it was a beautiful gap and go in my opinion, really just kind of cleared the pivot very, very nicely. So here's your kind of five minute time frame, and you got some opportunities uh, to buy back in here. Uh, and then it really just kind of popped up a little bit higher, traded up, came back down, popped again, came back down. So overall on Hilton worldwide, I uh, got stopped out for break even uh, approximately right about here and I was getting my hair cut and um, went to the gym and worked out for a little bit. And it did make it, uh, again, a, another good opportunity for a trade. If you got in, a, a, got a chance to get in here and place your stop here, you might have actually gotten two R's on that uh, around 30-30. So Hilton will be a good swing trade to keep an eye on, especially if we form a doji at the end of the day. This is a pretty strong gap. Uh, so my thoughts would be if we close above 
the high. Uh, so if we close above 3041, I'd be pretty, I'd be more bullish than bearish on that. And if we close below 2976, I wouldn't be outright bearish, but I'd wait for a little bit of a pullback and then buy the bounce, maybe an earnings, which is uh, beginning of May. Google making a little bit of a move today. Uh, Stan did a weekly put sale, and that's a 530 strike price that expires this Friday. So I'll be keeping an eye on that one. Looks very interesting uh, on Google right now. I mean, we trade right down to the 100. We're bouncing. Are we testing a neckline of a double bottom? Uh, I'm sorry, a double top. Are we going to roll over? Are we going to break higher? Well, it's fascinating that earnings is right around the corner. I think earnings will answer that question for us. So I'll be keeping an eye on Google and I guess kind of seeing what that one does. Uh, Netflix. Netflix had a really nice gap today. Our intraday trigger that I talked about yesterday was 425.16. Here's the gap on the hourly chart on Netflix. So you can see you had a nice little black candle gapped above really cleanly, uh, some pivots, and there's a nice little void right there for it to trade into and trade into the one, uh, 200 simple moving average. So uh, today I'll be keeping a close eye on some potential weekly spreads for Netflix, but here was the five minute, great, just really sensational bounce. I mean, it was a really, really good bullish breakout uh, right into the 10, boom, boom, shazam. Two R's to take home for the day if you got a chance to do that one. I posted that one um, in a text format to all of the traders who subscribe to the Group Me Trading Floor application. Patricia was asking about that one as well. So Netflix looked pretty clean off the bounce, off the tin. And last but not least, Tesla. Tesla, a nice little gap up today. Again, I'm interested to see if we do close above there. Robert Meek is in a 205-220 bear call spread this week, and he got into that yesterday, or I think the day before yesterday, and uh, he's basing that off the 100 simple moving average, which is about 211, so that is going to act and is acting as a little bit of a resistance. I mentioned yesterday at 322 Eastern that I think uh, Tesla would reach 211 by Friday, I don't mind being 10 cents off on that. Um, <laughs> it was 2, oh, 21090 today was the high. So I was mentioning that in regards to Robert's bear call spread uh, because I, I told him it was going to get a little close, but I think it's going to play out just fine because that 100 is going to act as a really good resistance. So we'll be keeping an eye on Tesla today as well since today is weekly's Wednesday on the trading floor and hopefully we can find some trades to take advantage of for the next two or three days. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching the Real Life Stock Review. You guys absolutely rock. I'll be broadcasting from Chicago on Friday as I'm going up there for an interview. And i uh, excited about that drive. Excited about staying with Brad Reed in Indianapolis tonight. And uh, just excited about life. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your support. I appreciate it. I'll see you Friday. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade it.